Humans come in all shapes and sizes, and throughout history, individuals who look different have often had problematic reactions from those around them. This is the astonishing story of Myrtle Corbin, a four-legged woman at the turn of last century who was able to live a rewarding life the way she wanted amidst medical, media and general public scrutiny. Myrtle was born in Tennessee in 1868 and the doctors who examined her after her birth found a healthy thriving baby well formed from her head to her navel but with two separate pelvises and pairs of legs. Interestingly, they found that Myrtle's parents were so similar in appearance that they felt compelled to spell out that the couple were not related. Myrtle's parents were to have four children in total, and the others were all normal. The doctors decided that Myrtle's spinal column was divided lower down, resulting in two sets of excretory organs at their base. As Myrtle grew, her two inner legs remained stunted and weak. She was able to move the two extra legs in the middle of her body, but they were unable to carry any weight. As well as drawing the attention of the medical community, Myrtle's unique bodily formation attracted curiosity from the general public. When Myrtle was about five weeks old, her father, William Corbin, was faced with economic difficulties. He was somewhat disabled from his service in the Civil War and had no sons to teach how to become farmers like himself. So he resorted to his only option in order to support his young family. For a small fee, members of the public could visit William Corbin and have a look at his four-legged daughter. As Myrtle grew up, she tried to get used to having people stare at her. She came to depend on her outside legs for walking and support, while her inside legs never developed to any degree, although they did register sensation and were able to be moved about. Her right foot was clubbed, and the smaller legs had only three toes on each foot. William Corbin started to take little Myrtle all around the country, to places where she was exhibited at fairs, sideshows, and so-called dime museums. She finally came into her own when she reached the age of about 14. Her father arranged a contract for her to appear with P.T. Barnum's travelling exhibitions at the unusually high salary of $250 a week. Myrtle spent the next few years on the road as one of the show's most popular acts. She was dubbed the four-legged girl from Texas, described as a four-legged woman who is gentle of disposition and happy by nature in the promotional literature. Seeing her success, other travelling show companies began to fake three- and four-legged women in their own performances. At the age of 19, Myrtle began to tire of all the attention and curiosity she attracted and married a student doctor named James Clinton Bicknell. A year later, Myrtle fell pregnant and subsequently became very ill, experiencing constant fevers and vomiting. A physician was called to examine Myrtle during her pregnancy. That was when it was discovered that she possessed two sets of fully functioning external and internal reproductive organs. After conducting some tests, the medicos determined that the unborn fetus was in her left uterus, a finding that surprised Myrtle, who revealed to the doctors that she always used the organs on the right side of her body for intercourse. Because her condition was making her ill, they suggested terminating the pregnancy for her own safety. Luckily though, Myrtle made a full recovery and went on to bear a total of five children without any more complications. It was reported that three of the babies were born from one side of her body and two from the other. Medical journals of the day described Myrtle as physically well and able to attend to all her household duties, as well as being very intelligent, refined and having some musical taste. They also used the unfortunate technical term of double monster to describe her, which was taken up by the press. For years, physicians could not understand what had caused Myrtle's condition. Scientists proceeded to investigate the circumstances of her birth to try and work out why Myrtle had an extra pelvis, set of legs and fully functioning excretory and reproductive systems. 
When born, Myrtle already had two healthy sisters, which seemed to indicate that her abnormality wasn't genetic. Eventually, Myrtle's doctors came to the astonishing conclusion that her extra set of organs and legs had evolved from an undeveloped twin. This extremely rare form of conjoined twinning is called dipagus. Myrtle had two separate pelvises side by side from the waist down because of her body axis splitting as it developed. Each of her small inner legs was paired with one of her outer legs. This condition meant that effectively Myrtle possessed two different bodies at her core, but the potential twin was never to develop, separate off and become her own person. In 1909, by which time Myrtle's children had all reached adulthood, she re-entered show business. Going under her previous moniker of the four-legged girl from Texas, she began appearing at Huber's Museum in New York at the age of 41, and more than 20 years since she had last gone on public exhibition. Myrtle was an immediate hit, having in her childhood learned some skills of showmanship. She would often dress all four lower limbs with matching socks and shoes. She went on to perform with Ringling Brothers and appear at Coney Island, soon earning $450 a week. She continued to make appearances for six more years, then gradually seemed to retire from the business. In 1928, Myrtle developed a skin infection on her right leg, which was diagnosed as erysipelas, a streptococcal infection. At that time, there was no treatment for this condition. Myrtle passed away a week later on the 6th of May 1928, aged 59, having lived an inspirational life on her own terms. At Myrtle's burial, her casket was covered in concrete and several family members stayed by it to keep watch until it was completely set. This was in order to prevent grave robbers from stealing her remains, as several medical practitioners and private collectors had offered financial incentives to gain possession of her body. 